Okay. Woo! I think we're back. I think we're back. Let's let's test our audio real quick. Yes. All right. We have audio. Okay. As I was just explaining before I had to run off and completely switch my setup. Oh, now it looks like crap, too. I knocked the camera when I was moving it. All right. Whatever. We're running with it. We're running with it. It's This is what it is. This is what it is. As I was explaining, before before I had to do all that, okay, we, we can hear, you can hear me. Good, good, good. Whew, okay, that was scary for a second. As I was trying to explain, before uh, I was running around, I have a new, I had a new monitor. Erica got me a new monitor for Christmas. And I wanted to use it today because it's much less bulky and it lets me get the camera a little bit closer. The only problem is, for whatever reason, apparently it doesn't work with the StreamYard audio. I have no idea why. That is so weird. I, there's no speakers built into that monitor, but that shouldn't make a difference for if I have if I have a like a, a mic attached to it. Whatever, whatever. Dang, I'm 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 a little disappointed that 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 didn't work, but whatever. We're gonna run with it. I'm, I'm here now, I'm here now. I'm sorry for the for the technical issues. That happens every time I try to use a, some sort of new piece of equipment with, with StreamYard. StreamYard is not particularly nice about these things. Anyway, who is in here? Emily Chambers, I see you. Mike Cook, what's going on? Uh, Floyd, what's going on? Tim Evans, good to see you. Ongia, thanks for popping by. Yes, yeah, surprise day drinking. Um, you know, I, I might be able to pull that off. I don't want to have to if I can help it. <laughs> I really only know, I really only know one or two. Uh, Jason, Mash and Drum, thanks for popping by. Sawyer fam, where are you? There you are. Um... Greg T. Stag, 2-Bit, what's up, 2-Bit? Um, <laughs> trying to get the camera further away from me. <laughs> and the Roop, what's going on, Roop? Good to see ya. Um, Burr Ben, oh, that's cute. Oh, I like that. That's adorable. That's a good name. And Scott Moody. Let's go on, Mr. Moody. How are you? Okay. So, yeah, I have the day off today. Um, and much like any day off, I'm going to spend it drinking. So, I might as well spend it drinking with you. Um, I know a lot of you are probably at work right now. Um, but if, if you're not, maybe have a drink with me. If, uh, if you're already... If you're just at work, well, you can enjoy. Get a contact, get a contact high off the the bourbon. All right. Oh, hot buttery rolls came up with that name. That's awesome. I like that. Okay. So this is what we're taking a look at today. Look at this. Look at this sweet box. So um, I was at work the other day, and I've seen these before at at the store. But um, one of our the one of the senior spirits people came up to me. He's like, Hey, do you want this? You know, you want you want this right quick. And I thought he meant the box. I was like, yeah, that's a sweet box. That's a really cool box. I can I'll take the hinges off of that. I'll use this part for set dressing and we can use the, the bottom part. Claremont, Kentucky. We can use this as a tray. That's awesome. Um, but then what he but actually there was actually whiskey inside of it. I, I was not expecting it. I thought I was just getting a free box, which I would have been perfectly happy with. But it's actually still got the booze inside of it. So that's just a nice bonus for me. Uh, oh, Greg Greg has some. Nice. He's got one of these. And Mateo. Oh, hey, how you doing, Mateo? Good to see you. I don't know if I've seen you in one of our streams before. Uh, nice, got the Knob Creek single barrel forward. Perfect. So yeah, so this is the Knob Creek single barrel experience. 
So when in a retailer wants to do a single barrel selection, they get this little kit. Um, I suppose also if you're a private citizen, you can also get this kit as well. Um, and they send you three samples. Unfortunately, I've only got the two right here because obviously one of these actually went on to be a single barrel selection at my work. And so they kept that one. Um, oh, awesome. Thank you, Mateo. I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, you know, so far, I thought I was going to get a lot more uh, rage at me about that one. I thought the Jim Murray fans were going to be out in force. But so far, it's been pretty much everyone, uh, mostly supportive, mostly supportive comments. Um, we did lose a few subscribers in the in the first few minutes after that came out there were a couple people who were obviously a little angry but uh we've we've gained those back now with people who were happy to happy to see that video so oh nice you got to help out with the store pick that's awesome yeah so they send you this they send you your samples which are, we'll talk about the samples a little bit more in a second uh because that's really the, the the cool part of this um, then they also send you, check this out, the Kentucky water. So you can, let's see if we can get that to focus. So that's actually purified Kentucky water, the source water, just for putting in your, in your Knob Creek bourbon. Um, then they do send you also, this is, this is a very nice test tube. You're going to send you a Knob Creek branded test tube. Um, with a whiskey fill line on it for proofing down your whiskey to, you know, what, you, what you're going to sell it at. Um, and we'll talk more about that, too. And a little eyedropper. They give you a whole kit. It's, a, it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, I haven't actually gotten to have a single barrel uh, pick of the KC Rye. I, would, I, hope to, I hope we get one in sooner or later. We might actually have some old ones floating around. Now that I say that, I wonder if we still do. I have to check when I'm at work tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about the samples real quick because they give you quite a bit of information and they give you this little booklet too. I was reading this little booklet before I hopped on stream. The booklet's actually really fun. Most of it is stuff, you know, kind of stuff that a lot of people already know. It's talking about rye versus corn, blah, blah, blah. How to look at the color, the nose, the taste, um, that sort of thing. But they do get into talking about um, where they're pulling barrels from for the single barrel program. And, you know, they get into talking about, well, you know, top racks are warmer. They lose more alcohol. Bottom racks are cooler and it's damper down there. So they lose more water or uh, uh I had that backwards. Top racks more, lose more water. Bottom racks lose more alcohol. So the top racks are more tannic. Bottom rack, the bottom floors are more um, so, are softer. They lose more alcohol, so they're at a lower proof. Blah blah blah. Um, but what's interesting to me, at reading the little booklet, is that all of the bourbon single barrels that Knob Creek releases, it, they're actually from the center floors. So, and they give you these little cards showing you exactly where they came from. Uh, <laughs> I get that reference. Every good day is a good day to, or every day is a good day to punch a Nazi. That's how I feel about it. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. That's fun. Um, yeah, but good riddance to bad rubbish, I say. We don't, yeah, we didn't need those folks in and about the channel anyhow, for sure. Um, oh, shush, shush, we're talking first. We got to talk about all this stuff. Okay, fine, I'm pouring, I'm pouring drinks. All right, let's start with this guy. Wait, which one? Let's start with the lower proof one first. So this is from Warehouse... I, I assume someone, this is supposed to be I, they just write their eyes to look like ones. Um, 
Floor four, rack 30, uh, tier one. Uh, proof is coming in at 121.8. So what is that, 60.9? Something like that. And it's nice, they give you this handy little card. So for your A sample, they point out exactly where, what on what floor it is. So this is number four. And it's on the first tier, so it's the lower, the lower tier of the barrels. And then they tell you, let's see here. They tell, I think they tell you which rack, so, or the, which rack. So this is rack 30. I'm guessing that means that it's sitting farther back in the rick house. Um, so more towards the center. Um, although I suppose that depends on how many racks are actually in the house. I don't know off the top of my head. If anyone does, that would, oh, that would be good to know. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because they take all of their bourbon single barrels from the middle floors. So in this case, this is a one through, this is a seven floor Rick house. So they only take them between like three and five. Um, and then, but for their rye single barrel picks, they actually take those barrels from like floors, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, if it's a nine floor Rick house and two and one. So the rye barrels actually come from like high and low. So you can get a lot of variance between those. Whereas the bourbon barrels run right along the middle. So those are usually more consistent, um, which kind of makes sense, right? If your bourbon is kind of your flagship brand and you want that to be consistent, people who are drinking rye maybe are more okay with some weirdness and some variation. I think that makes a little bit of sense. So, all right, let's get into these samples. I know, I know that's why people are here. Um, we'll take a peek at sample A first. Hmm. That is definitely not as bitey as I thought it might be for 120, 121. It's nutty. There's a nuttiness there. Yeah, that's the main thing I'm getting is kind of a cashew. A little bit of a cashew thing. Like a salty, salty cashew kind of thing. Yep. If you there's there's too many Nazis in this world going unpunched, right? If Captain America taught us one thing, it's punch a Nazi. It's the American thing to do. Uh, hey, Spencer, what's going on? Good to see you. Oh, nice. Very cool. You have to tell me what you think of that. Um, I think Sugar Kitty was saying it's somewhat boo rye -y. I believe it. I mean, a lot of Kentucky rye is. Yeah, there's a little bit of a brown, brown sugary thing on this guy. It's not super excessively sweet. It, it, is, it, has, it has a very dry roasted nut kind of thing going on for it. Yeah, a, a dry roasted nut with just a little bit of brown sugar. Maybe a, maybe a touch of something maple-y, a little bit maple-y, like a tiny bit of maple syrup, maybe more so like, like brown sugar though. I think it's more brown sugary than anything. Hmm. I like that. It is a little bit sweeter on the taste. Oh, they also instruct you on how to do the Kentucky chew in here. I don't know if I uh, mentioned that. There is a bit in here about tasting where they're like, here's how to do the Kentucky chew. Um, yeah, and take a sip of bourbon and sort of chew on it. The process uh, involve your entire mouth and when, when tasting, uh, get it on the roof of your mouth, sides, and all over your tongue. It's very cute. Um, I like I like the literature. It's kind of just I mean it's salesmanship, but it's cute. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. Run them off a bridge. Oh, I'm sorry. Kirkland does make a couple of good things. I like their Irish. Um, 
I like their their Irish single malt. That wasn't bad, as I remember it. Hmm. At least I'm drinking. Drinking is good. Yeah, that has a little bit of a fruity note to it. Not not really excessive. It's the the finish is all tannic. There's still a, that kind of cashew thing. The brown sugar, but there's also a darker fruit. Uh, it's not cherry. It's not apple. What is that? What is that? It's a there's a that dry dry roasted nut and then there's something else. I feel like it's a mixture of, of like, this is going to sound weird, but like cantaloupe and fig, like it's not dark enough. It's not dark enough. And like, like that really thick kind of figgy taste, but it's kind of like that just with some fresher elements to it. That's why like cantaloupe plus fig equals this fruit. I don't know if that, that kind of fruit exists in nature, but that's what I'm getting here. Like, it's not really a dark cherry. It's not really a plum. It's kind of getting figgy, but it's still too, too like maybe underripe kind of thing. Yeah, it's got a fresher taste to it, mixing in with that, with that thicker, heavier, darker fruitiness. Uh, like time lessons from a whiskey set. Everybody's got to work out your tongue. You know, you don't want that failing on you when you need it most. That is indeed weird. I like it. I like it. It's different, though. It definitely is different. Uh, Kirkland Irish Cream is as good as Bailey's and less than Bailey's is very. Bailey's is excessively expensive for what you're getting. Um, the 12 year blend scotch is also good. And the space side single malts. I don't think I've gotten to have any of the space side single malts. No, no, I lied. I did. I did. Yeah, it was good. I remember it being pretty, pretty solid. All right, let's take a peek at sample B. So sample B was on floor five of warehouse L. L and I are both seven floor uh, rick houses. This was on rack one, so I'm assuming that means closer to one side of the uh the house the rick house um and tier one so again pretty much in the center of the center in terms of floors of the rick house however both of these are pretty far to the side of the building i would imagine that that does allow for a little bit more influence from the elements than say things that are in the heart of the rick house these guys right here i would imagine for the most part, these guys are going to be the most consistent. I would imagine there's a little bit more influence from the elements out here on the sides. Um, and then obviously, top to bottom, hotter to colder, drier to damper. Um, so, some, some Kirkland is legit. This is meh, like weak monkey shoulder. Yeah, I kind of felt, I, I thought monkey shoulder was pretty good. And then I, I don't know, I've, I've, I wax and wane on how much I like monkey shoulder. Um, no drinky drink for you yet? Don't worry. Don't worry. I was just saying, get a contact high off of the, off of this, off of this whiskey. Um, you enjoyed every single one you bought from Costco? That's fair. I mean, there's nothing wrong with bargain brands. And it's especially like, Especially considering like Kirkland vodka is what it's basically just the same stuff that they put in every high end vodka. They just charge you what they ought to be charging you for it. So, hey, Mike Lizak is in. Is that true, Sugar Kitty? 
I mean, for the for the KC uh, single ride picks, I don't. I mean, I don't think they're allowed to call it that if if it's a straight. If it's a straight rye, I'm pretty sure they're not allowed to put that coloring in. But if they label it as just rye, I suppose they might be able to. I have never heard that before. Um, Mike, what's going on? Uh, good to see you. You like the Costco Canadian? I'll have to try that. We'll have to get it on the show. All right, let's get into this fella. Oh, oh, yeah. This guy's way spicier. Sample B here. Um, Steve A, I'm pretty sure it is allowed for blends of straight whiskey. So blends of straight whiskey can have blending materials added. Obviously, blend blended whiskey can. I think it, because with rye, straight rye, you can't. But with base rye, regular old rye, I know you can add flavoring. I don't know if you can add like blending materials. I would imagine you can. I think Weddell would probably know better than me about that. Obviously bourbon you can't and straight rye you can't and straight anything you can't. But with, the thing is with, yeah, like with regular just rye whiskey, you can get away with a lot, uh, which is kind of, kind of nuts. Um, but yeah, I mean, then that's why Templeton gets away with doing what it does. Um, <laughs> he lost my sense of smell and taste living vicariously through you. Hopefully it comes back soon. Yeah. And Weddle, if, if Weddle, if you're still in my dude, if you, ha if you want to weigh in, I'm sure I can look this up later and we can figure it out. Um, yeah, this is way more spicy. There's a lot more pepper here. Um, in the U.S. or Kanukistan? Um, no, I mean in the U.S. for rye. For for adding just regular rye whiskey, you can, like Templeton rye whiskey is aged four years. They could call it straight, except that they added flavoring to it. So they have to call it just base rye whiskey. So, um, like, if you call it straight, you can do that. Like bourbon, you can't add flavoring or coloring, period. But with rye whiskey, the TTB says that adding blending materials is okay because, for whatever reason, that doesn't change the definition of rye whiskey. I don't know. That's weird. It's, it's a weird fucking thing. Oh, and here's Weddle. Straight is, is its own delineation. It precludes adding color. If it isn't straight, you can do a lot. Um, as far as my understanding was, bourbon you can't add flavor to. Period, um, because then it would change the def. They would change the category of whiskey, um, but not rye. For whatever reason, rye you can doctor up as much as you want. That's a weird thing. Um, Sugar Kitty says her bottle does say straight rye, so yeah, but I take one look, it says so distinctly KC with the exact match of the KC bourbon color. You must have gotten just a really, really hot barrel. That barrel must have been, must have been high in the rec house and just absorbed a ton of that wood. Um, and Floyd says, oh, found a new candidate, Beams 8 Star Blended. Okay, okay. I like that. I'll have to. I'll have to see if we can't get that in. Okay, back to this though. This the sample A. Ooh, yeah. Coming back to sample A, this smells way more caramely and vanilla than this guy right here. Sample B really, really upped that dry nuttiness and added some like not quite. It's not cinnamon. It's something spicy though. It just, I think it's just black pepper. This is just like black pepper and cashew. Maybe a little bit of peanut too. And actually, this is actually getting like charcoal-y. Sample B, yeah. Sample B is actually like if you roasted nuts over a charcoal pit. This is surprisingly like ashy. It's not just, it's not just sweet. It's like, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, sample B is really good. Sample B is really good. Absorb the wood, yes. I'm an expert at absorbing wood. Um, Nick <laughs> P says he prefers to keep his nuts away from charcoal pits. <laughs> um, this one, there's a fruitiness on sample B as well. But sample B has definitely gone way, way past that melony figgy thing. This is going straight into dark cherry, a tart, dark cherry, like dark and tart somehow. It's, it's dark, big, sweet, overripe cherry, but a little bit tart. There's a little bit of that cherry tartness too. Um, wow, the finish just hangs with you on this one. God damn, that's amazing. Um... But then this also, like that black pepper, that that freaking allspice comes out, that charcoal, that woodiness, that is heavy. That is some heavy, heavy, ashy shit. Um, I really like this one. And honestly, like they also, the, the this is more sweet. Sample A is certainly more sweet. It's definitely more caramel. This is more like like caramel and vanilla, dulce de leche kind of thing. Um, whereas sample B, that has a little sweetness too. That certainly does. This is more of a, this is more like just that kind of sugar, like Kentucky nut cake sugar, the frosting you put on a Kentucky nut cake. Um, that's my old man's favorite cake, and he always makes like a nice, like a thick, big old thick layer uh, of caramel on top um, to offset that really dry nuttiness. This is, that's, it is like that. It's caramely sweet, but it's more about that nuttiness. It's more about that dry ashiness. So it definitely, that carameliness is kind of dialed back and is just there to offset a little bit of that spice. Um, yay, Edward Fulmer, what's going on? Glad to glad to see you joining us from work. Hope you don't have to work too much longer. Hope your day is coming to an end soon. Um, yeah, that is surprising though, right? That you can add stuff to rye. You wouldn't think so. You wouldn't think so, but. Yeah, I remember uh, Chuck, uh, what's his name, Chowdhury, talking about that and how people were getting away with flavoring their rye. Um, yeah, it's nutty. It's nutty. Uh, hey, what's up, Wheels? Oh, wrong one. There we go. Wheels, what's going on? Good to see you, buddy. Haven't seen you in a chat for a minute, so it's good to have you around. Thank you for coming in for this little day drinking experience. Mmm. 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 Sample B. Sample B is awesome. I am a big old fan of this guy. It does drink hotter. It certainly does drink hotter than Sample A does. Uh, sample B here. Whoo. That is... And that kicks. That kicks. It is at 131.5% or proof, I should say. Sorry, 131.5 proof, which puts it at what? 65 point something? 65.8? No, 55.75. Yeah, 65.75. I'm good at math. This guy's awesome. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have sample C to test out because they stole that one from me. All right, let's 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 check out this water real quick. So if you're doing this for like a, an actual storefront, they will give you these. They give you the samples. Uh, Ken has maths. Yeah, math was never my strong suit. I always hated math. Um... But yeah, when they give you the samples, they're actually at barrel proof. But when they sell the uh, when they sell you the bottles to pass along to your customers, 
then they actually proof them down. So for the bourbon, it's 120 proof, and for the rye, 115 proof. So they give you a chart to, um, to if you want to proof your stuff down to what your customers will get it at. So they give you this little chart, and depending on what proof your thing is at, you can sample it, you can proof it down, and then know what it's going to taste like for your customers. That's pretty cool. However, they also they so that's when they give you this whole thing. You're supposed to use the line. You're supposed to pull it up to pour it up to this line and add a certain number of milliliters and stuff. Blah blah. blah. We're not going to do that because I don't have actually enough whiskey to fill it up to that line. Um, Spencer, I would imagine it's a money making thing. Probably they can sell more bottles that way. <laughs> Honestly, in the literature. They say that's what Fred No chose it at because he thinks that's the perfect proof for both sipping rye as well as making cocktails. I don't necessarily believe that. Um, my guess would probably be that it was just adding more water let them sell more barrels of rye. I would think. I'm not sure about that. I mean, call me a cynic, I guess, but... That's what I think. All right, we're going to just add three drops to each of these. See what happens. I like that I they include a pipette. Now I have now I have a nice little pipette. Let's see what Kentucky water tastes like real quick. Tastes like water. I don't think there's anything particularly Kentuckian about it. Um. Oh, you're going to crack open the Makir? Yeah, do it. Do it. Like the Emperor. Do it. Also, now I have a free test tube, which is going to be really helpful when I create my clone army to uh, take over the Republic. Um, I, had, I haven't. I haven't had that one. Um, not this year's, anyway. So... What do you, what do you think of that guy? Um, probably, yeah, I would guess that's probably it. Rye does generally cost more to work with overall. Rye is harder to mash and takes, and you have to be a little bit more delicate with it because it gets all gummy and, you know, corn's easy. Corn's easy to mash. It's easy to distill. It's kind of a safe bet. Rye is a little bit more funky and you know, weird. So, and obviously distilling it is more difficult. So yeah, if you can sell a few more bottles of rye, make a couple extra dollars, it offsets some of the issues you have with cleaning out your mash tons and your, your equipment after working with this weird, gummy, starchy freaking grain. Um, oh, you haven't cracked it yet? <laughs> well, when you do, let me know. You'll have to let us all know what you think. Um, the one I had a couple years ago, I thought was good. It was solid. So I'm sure there's no way it's going to be bad, right? There's no way it's going to be bad. But, you know, speaking of age statements, I actually didn't see if they tell you when these were barreled and bottled. I don't see it on here. Yeah, I don't see it on here. I mean, we know they have to be at least nine years old. They could be a lot older. But, yeah, they do give us the lot IDs. Maybe you can kind of figure out from that what ages they are relative to each other. But hard to tell. We know it's at least, we know it's at least nine. Uh, it should be on the cards, is it? Oh, it is. Look at this. Oh, cool. It is on here. Okay, okay, okay. So sample A, January 6, 2011. Um, so obviously the sample was taken sometime in February of this year. So that would put it around, well, yeah, nine years. And then this one is December 9th, 2010. So that would put it around 10 years. Yeah, 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 you, you were right. It is on the cards. People are telling me it's on the cards. I just missed that completely. Um, 
That's also an interesting point, Sugar Kitty. Um, maybe they do lose more proof than the bourbon. That could partially be because they are they aren't taking uh, rye barrels from the center floors. They're taking it from the higher end and the lower end. So some of those may have gained proof. Some of those may have lost quite a bit of proof. So maybe they have to do that. Maybe it's a, a practical consideration. That's an interesting point. Um, all right. But yeah, we've let this water sit for a minute. Let's get into it. All right. Yeah, it smells about the same. It smells about the same. Yeah, still pretty caramely, still pretty brown sugary. Ooh, this one's fun. This one got more perfumey. Uh, barrel B, or yeah, sample B is much more. Oh, like a like a burning sweet, like some sort of like sweet smelling burning wood. It's really nice. A bonfire, a little bit. Not like soup, not like smoky, smoky, but just a little bit of kind of a, a sweet, a sweet woodiness. Yeah. I dig that. I dig that. What are you? Mm, there's something else there, too. What is that? Oh my God. It reminds me of some sort of fragrance I've smelled, like a perfume I've smelled at least once, maybe back in the day, like something my great aunt wore. Mmm. Oh, man. I really like that. I really like it. It's like my old man's wood shop and my great aunt's perfume mixed together. That's cool. I like that. Water did a really interesting thing on this nose this one the water didn't do so much this smells it smells more fruity i guess it smells more like red licorice like a cherry kind of licorice or like um swedish fish kind of it's much sweeter it's much sweeter Mhm. Mm Yeah, that got lemony, like a, a really kind of artificial cherry kind of thing, lemony, citrusy, pretty sweet. That one is has gotten a little sickeningly sweet. Everyone's just suggesting old, <laughs> old perfume brands. I don't, I don't know the brand. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I like that one of Emily Chambers is just opium. Is that a perfume? Did people did people just wear opium back in the day? <laughs> I have we whiskey tube has that effect on people, Floyd. It really does. All right, let's let's taste a little bit of sample B. Hmm. That's interesting. That's interesting. This still drinks hot. This still drinks pretty fucking hot. However, the the taste got more fruity. The taste lost some of that tannic bite. It lost some of the spicier elements. Got more fruity. Got more grapey, I would say. It's it's starting to yeah, get into like a grape lappy taffy thing. Um and it, I don't get as much of that sweet wood perfumey thing on the no uh, that I on the taste like I did on the nose. The nose on this got really interesting. I really like the nose on this. Kind of a nostalgic smell for me. Um, the taste, I'm I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Um, Opium, opium is actually a perfume. Okay, cool. I had no idea. I just assumed opium was was what you what you smoked back in like eighteen ninety. 
Oh, the nose on this, it actually has something, a slightly more dilly note to it now. Mmm, mmm. The nose on this is awesome. Like a little bit of a dill note. I really like this. I really like this. Oh yeah, Sugar Kitty, you're in you're in that line of work, aren't you? I for, I forget. Yeah, you are. Um. Yeah, this is cool. So of the two, I gotta say, Sample B would be would be my choice. No problem. Really, really enjoy Sample B. Sample A is not bad. Sample A is not bad. A little sweet for my taste. Uh, not quite as much of a punch, but certainly not bad. Both of these are pretty awesome. So I don't know. The thing is, I don't know what number or, or number three, uh, letter C, tasted like. I don't know what that one, what was up with that one. Um, because I think they've already sold all that. Well, maybe. Did I buy one of those? I don't know. I don't remember. So I wonder what was going on with that one that they like C so much better than B because I wasn't part of this pick. Then again, to be fair, to be fair, um, when you're doing a barrel pick for a store, you're not always picking the one you like the best. You are pick sometimes picking ones that you think are more generally marketable. So, <laughs> you know, it, it could be that they that letter C was better than this, or maybe it had something that they thought the general public would be enjoy it would uh, enjoy more. Thank you, Nick P. Appreciate you. <laughs> Didn't the new season just come out? I think it did. Season was it nine? I think it just came out on Christmas. I haven't been watching TV much these last few days. I've been working a lot. We've We've got to get through the end of January or the beginning of January to be officially past the holiday rush. So it's gonna it's gonna be a minute. Um, or actually, it's not gonna be a minute, is it? Because tomorrow's the eve. So yeah, I I work tomorrow. I get the I get National Hangover Day off, and then I work the second and the third. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. That's the problem. Working in a liquor store, January is dead. Like everyone, everyone loses hours in January, just because everyone with their if people drink a shit ton over the holidays, then they cut back on January first because it's like New Year's resolutions and shit, and they don't, you know, they're not drinking as much because it's not the holidays anymore, and they feel bad about themselves for drinking as much as they did during the holidays and. People are like, oh, I'm going to do, like, no drink January now. That's a thing. So, yeah, we're definitely, I'm going to definitely have a lot more time on my hands. Um, oh, see, yeah, there you go. There's one that you loved, but others said it was too hot, even when you proofed it down. That is fair. This is a, this is a hot boy. It's a real, real hot boy right here. Um, but, to be fair, I enjoy that, so... Maybe the general public wouldn't. So, um, but yeah, so that has been this stream. I am probably going to head on out of here in a minute. However, I think um, I think I'm going to be back. Let me get the link for you guys because if you haven't been following us over on Twitch. Let me find it real quick. God dang it. Does anyone have our Twitch link? Because I'm bad at I'm bad at things. Um, I'm probably going to be going live on Twitch probably in like 30 minutes. I'm probably going to take a break here. Then I'm going to go over. I'm going to finish these two off while playing Cyberpunk. And as long as I'm playing, as long as I'm playing Cyberpunk, I might as well be streaming it. So if you guys want to come hang out over there, find us over on Twitch. I finally found the link. I'm going to throw it up here um, for everyone to check out. I'll probably be going live, yeah, about 3.30-ish, 3.45-ish over there. Obviously, if you're not into video games, totally cool. I just don't like to do video game content on this channel. I prefer to go over to Twitch because, like, this is a drinking channel. Twitch is my gaming well-I-drink channel. 
So <laughs> if you want to come hang out more, I'll be over there in about 30 minutes. You know, come check us out on there. And then tomorrow, Erica and I are going to be doing a stream together. It's going to be a New Year's Eve stream. So I'll probably be over on Whiskey Crusaders at 7 o'clock. Then back to our channel for a stream for us doing a wrap-up of the year for the Rocket Review channel. And then uh, I'm probably going to be popping over to Bourbon Bites for a little while to hang out for the big Whiskey Tube New Year's uh, New Year's stream. So if you're not subscribed to Crusade or not Crusaders, Cast Strength, sorry, Cast Strength, let me go around Cast Strength. If you're not subscribed over there, make sure you go do that. If you're not subscribed to Bourbon Bites, go do that. And make sure to come back here and hang out tomorrow night. So, all right. I will see the rest of you in about 30. So, everybody, you guys have a good one. Make sure to stay healthy, stay safe, and stay rotten.